Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the Sound Arts Lecture Series. Welcome to folks that are streaming online. I think I'm looking at you now. I'm just going to wave to the online contingency. There's the camera, there you are. Um, so, we're very, very excited today. We have uh, Rie Nakajima here. Um, the session is going to be much more expanded and um, possibly improvised than usual. I think we're going to encourage sort of a dialogue as part of the, the kind of the, the afternoon as well. Um, so that's very exciting. I've got very dull things to say, <laughs> as always. First thing is, today, if you need the toilet, could you go out the back door and not the front? That would be very, very helpful. Um, I also want to remind you while we're here that next week the lecture is online with Christophe Ligon, another wonderful artist. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and yeah, so hold just question and answers probably won't happen in a block. Feel free and Rio will talk about this in a second. Um, to kind of intervene today. We want it to be quite relaxed and different to the usual setup. Um, so thank you all for coming and I'm not going to read Rie's bio because we decided not to do that and I'm just going to hand it over to you from here. <laughs> so thank you again for today and for coming. We're all excited and Rory's cut me off which is not the first time it's done that. Anyway, let's go. Thank you for coming, and then, as uh, Mark said, introduced, this is quite informal <laughs> lecture. I'm not good at lecture or um, talk or workshop or any, so I just do what I can do, and, uh, and you can just uh, express your question or interrupt or distract me anytime. So I think I would be happy to be distracted. So first, uh, I have this suitcase uh, where I put things um, I use for my performance. I do performance and also installation. Well, that's just the forms, but if in between, these are kind of uh, relating somehow, but uh, when I explain it, just uh, performance and installation, which is just easier to explain, or also it's just a setup of the context, one like the art, music, but I don't really differentiate both things, now it's just uh, where I want to hear the, my favorite sound mm -hmm. and then want to enjoy, so it's just the performance on the stage. Anyway, uh, I haven't performed since beginning of November, um, I just uh, didn't have opportunity to perform, so I, I will see how much I remember. <laughs> um, normally, I'm quite happy to forget what I have, and also my sound, which is, as long as it's uh, useful or nice thing as much as what I remember, but the, so it's uh, also just it's nice to, that's my way to accept my limit of my memory and things. I, I made a, oh my goodness. I have to do with my one hand So here I have the wooden box that I haven't really opened for a long time. The, this box I found uh, in the garbage in Japan. And then I took it and then it, I used it as a container, but then sometimes the the object to hit, but then 
with my uh, many names, performance and things. It's been very useful. Yes, I put the scissors in between stones. I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, this is. Uh, I packed them after my performance in Paris in November. That's how it's. So it's kind of, I like this, uh, it's just a little memories like in the box and then how I packed, how I mean, when it's open it's just, a, it comes out like a little memory of sound and a little memory of how I did. But when you pack it's always kind of busy, like uh, you have to be, uh, well I also like to finish as quick as possible and then that's why. Then when I, I look up down so people don't talk to me and then I just try to be busy and then so I don't really remember much of anything. Yeah. This is the stone I found in uh, Italy by the river. They have a very beautiful river in the place called Udine. Some of the objects, uh, this is very old objects I made in Nanyani. Not old, but uh, maybe more than 15 years or 12 years. The early objects I made, I mean, this whistle I used for my degree installation at Chelsea's College, Chelsea College, like in 2005. And I ordered a lot of whistle and then I didn't need that much and it, but I couldn't throw them away and I always kept this as how to recycle and it's just a little guilty to I find it guilty to have a lot of it's just a I have this idea and then because I'm not such uh, confident with my idea or confident to always order too many. And then after I have so many that I don't need, and then I feel really guilty for the, and then, so I put them aside, to like waiting, waiting thing, object, waiting object when I'm, uh, and then this whistle as well. But then this one I, is a, uh, from one object, sometimes I find a new movement or new uh, function during the performance or during the installation and installing my work. And so that's one object. I like to keep them uh, quite, I don't know uh, how to say that this. I don't. When I really, really lost the interest, I might clear my objects, but when it's not still, I could feel some potential, then I leave it. But I like to keep them as a simplest form as possible, so which means I don't want to manipulate the shapes and form too much, just to observe the function and then shapes and the element of them so they can be spontaneous in time 
like uh, when I'm spontaneous, they can be also spontaneous and we respond to each other and we find some new way together. That's the, my way of uh, relating uh, the relationship with my objects. I also don't like to call my objects as well because they're not mine. <laughs> it's just objects. Yeah. little yellow plastic is uh, given by Akio Suzuki. He, we were in the same festival last year, uh, organized by Niki Yui. They have a really beautiful festival in Yusuf But Akio came and then he helped me to tidy up my objects. And then he put, I noticed he's really putting lots of seeds and stones in my bo objects, like in a box. And then, and then I told him I don't need them. <laughs> 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 like, what you doing? And I don't need them. And he was really smiling and he was very happy. <laughs> like, he's very, like, so I, but I kept this somehow the most, uh, I don't know. It's just that uh, he just randomly found on the floor and then you know, so. Well. <laughs> but some of them can just really continue to, uh, to stay with me, but I don't plan that. These uh, are like a Japanese like scrubbing mm -hmm. brush. Uh, these two. Um, I think I also used this for a long time and then the first my idea was to have this sound of the brushing. Like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of thing. No? But then always this little idea never really succeed in your, it's too subtle or not the, they don't uh, make the sound that I want or because I, I don't know how to make a big sculpture um, always do within my scale and then this kind of sound sometimes I need the sound I want to make sometimes need bigger motor and something people say okay, yeah, you should use a power more powerful motor or like uh, but then yes yes and then <laughs> I don't do it <laughs> I think it's constant like the uh, how do you say like um, constant and having idea and then giving up and then but from there 
I find the little pennies for it. This is my tool case that most of uh, I carry just only this and sometimes I change the inside of like little bits of screws and little bits of the like uh, things that when, especially when I do perform, uh, installation like some uh, I don't want to usually they have to bigger kind of uh, tools but the this I carry, so I can just, uh, I don't need technician usually, you know, I can just be alone and work, and so I can do this. And it is difficult to work with technician for me because uh, I don't really, I can't hear when they're with me, and then also when I'm installing one piece, I'm listening this sound, and then I start to think something else for the next sound, and then for when I'm, and then I move to the next sound, and then I go start to sing something else. So it's just always going around and around, and I go back to the, my the first piece I made. Um, so it's just a, so this kind of uh, how work, this kind of way of working is quite difficult for me to work with technician, but also uh, I improvise at outside so just, uh, this is but this way is uh, uh, I think everyone has a different way to work and then and I never had a studio to work so this is just over years I found this way to like a performance and installation and then just here and there and, uh, so it, As soon as I put something on the floor, I don't know if you can see, maybe I put it here. It's just uh, telling me uh, 
the material flow because it stays here but if it's like a, if the base is different the contact is different it's always it, it's all changed This is a, uh, for example, the wooden floor or concrete, it just goes down, so slide down, and then continue to its own way. But this, because this is carpet, it just stays more in the middle or moves very slowly. And to stop this, uh, going down, you can do this. But it's carpet, so it's constant noise, which I don't like. Um, okay, so I just... Uh, Don't check my battery because sometimes it's just not working. And then also I keep the very low uh, battery because sometimes it's too too much spinning that I don't like. So it's just uh, If you want to move around, you can also do that too. Mm. I don't mind.
kind of thought maybe you could help them to stop some harm, but I didn't know how many of you are here. So then after the mass, so the loudest sound or the sound you can hear the most, you can switch off. I took it to both one, both. louder because I should out the real position. Well, I don't know.
always do on my own. So it's kind of good to always realize how much we share the sense of the next and this is and then, yeah. When? Yeah, um, was it when you were at art school or BD? Yeah, or? Uh, first I studied art history in Japan, my first degree. But then it was a little too academic for me. And then, but I didn't know if I can, I'm good at academic or not. I don't know my nature when I was young. And then, but immediately I couldn't do it. And then I like making things. Um, then I met sculptors, and they were so nice. Um, then I thought I just I should do sculpture, and then moved to London to study sculpture. So I did sculpture at Chelsea first BA, and then first I wanted to do wood carving. Like did, uh, in Japan, sculpture is very technical, like the material based. Like there's a department of sculpture course has wood, stone, metal. That time, still quite strong this um, condition. So, I, but I really like wood and the texture of it, and I thought I would really like this. But then, when I moved to London, uh, I just uh, couldn't really enjoy as much as I enjoyed in the first time, like just doing wood and chisel. And then this I didn't know why, but then I started to, maybe I should try other material. And then I started to use sound. And first time I used sound in the second year at Chelsea. That was the so uh, strong or uh, yeah, experience that because I used to play piano when I was a kid um, for a long time. But music, subjects of music, music is a little heavy for me, like uh, this uh, training and then this. And then I was so happy to get away from it, you know, just then I thought I should do art and then so I try not to see sound and music part, but then it's quite deeply in myself, in, in me, and that the, so this uh, starting to use sound is just accepting my past and bring to future in a way. So that's kind of the always in the passage. So first time I made a sculpt, uh, sound in my installation, and um, that was just gave me lots of question. Um, then I didn't satisfied with it. That was kind of the motivation to make the new next piece. And I couldn't stop. I thought I have to really use sound again, again, next, again, because always there's a kind of the uh, question and also the, like I was not happy with what I did. I was happy with some part, some percentage of this uh, work I like, but always the, the other, like half, half, or you know, like never really satisfied with what I did. So that's why uh, I think it, that's the uh, real motivation that I could continue in a way. Because uh, then, since then, I made some, and then most, because that time, the first time. <laughs> I started to use sound, and then my oldest friend came to stay with me in London. And then she saw what I'm doing, and then, ah, because you did the music here. That's why it came back. And then apparently I said to her, she just told me last year. I said, no, <laughs> it's nothing to do with my past. And then, so when you really, when it's really in, on, in the moment and in time, you're confused, it, but you just, well, I was confused. I, was, I started to use sound. It's not like my choice, but it just came out, and then I 
she will to neglect this part. But then I, <laughs> and then I, now I reflecting back on why I, I, I started to use sound and I totally agree with her. But then I have to say sorry to my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> but, yeah, so yeah, it's like this. Um, then performance came in to my practice, which is like uh, uh, after Chelsea, I went to Slade for the master course for sculpture, and then then I started to meet some uh, musician and a sound artist during this uh, two years and also just after the course and I didn't know the context much like sound art or experimental music and I met uh, many like good friends and then they were so nice and I thought sculpture was nice it's uh, sculpture is nice but the musicians are very comfortable to, to be with, and then I started to spend a lot of time with musicians. Then one of them made a mistake that I could perform, <laughs> and musicians are really constantly organizing events and then festivals, and they exchange, you know, doing each other. That's how you know communities is so strong, and then that. And then one of them asked me, and the uh, Belgian Brussels, and asked me to come and. Uh, what happened is Phil Nibrook was a good friend of mine, and he's a, he helped me a lot in a funny way. And then he had given me your updated portfolio, and then he put my portfolio on his laptop, and each time he has a guest up to his home, he's showing the when he remember and then one of them got a mistake like I, I can perform and I got the email from this guy <laughs> they come and perform and then that time I had not uh, not much to do like uh, not ex no exhibition or I mean, exhibition is more like a, it's a different process and then I, and then I found I was a bit tired of orga organizing something like myself and then so I felt I should try at least if I have nothing to do and I went to uh, Belgium also to perform but then that I personally don't like to be in front of people much and then installation was much uh, simpler for me I thought because I can make sound alone and then I can listen and I can tune and doing this in front of people is quite tough. And then <laughs> so I thought uh, there's a leftover of my uh, ambitious object, you know, like that I could use for my installation. It's on my shelf, and then that at least I can try to make, try to use them and uh, give them life a little bit. But also I attached battery uh, and I combine these little modern objects and then batteries so battery idea came because I wanted to escape from people or camera or kind of video so as soon as people as soon as I put uh, my objects on the floor somewhere I quickly move and get new things and then uh, set up in the some space in the behind of people or something so I can it's like hide and seek and then I I could uh, it just what I needed to escape from the focus but then I said this to my friend and then she said my friend another friend like a magician said yeah you are too much self-conscious <laughs> So okay, and then maybe, but I have no confidence. And, but it's always, uh, uh, 
I don't trust my uh, myself. That's the one thing. So if I trust myself, I would say no to performance, no to uh, the music, or no to a lot of things I want. Then, but because I don't trust my understanding of myself, about myself, I always leave a little like option open for myself. So even I don't really feel comfortable, sometimes good to push a little bit. So that, uh, that brings something else, that, that was the experience. I guess it's, it's interesting that everything stays very sculptural and like I liked earlier when you said that you try not to call them your objects and actually I think the way that you perform and install them mm. to me at least feels very much like you leave them space to yeah. sort of do their own thing and exist and it's I, th I don't know I think that's quite I th it's something that I find mm. very important and I guess I've never heard you say that before but it's something that I thought mm. and I, I don't know if that's is that like a, is that something that you really think think about a lot the, the idea of the objects being on their own and having their own like that, uh, yes I think a lot about it it's a uh, well, one question stays me long, and then it, I cannot really answer sometimes. Like, for example, can you name the object? Can you name some like title or name the piece, anything? And I was asked by one, one of the Japanese galleries. Um, then I thought, well, I could, like my performance or this imp improvised performance, I could all individual objects, but then after, it took me five about five years to uh, find the answer myself that I don't need names. I really don't need the names for my objects. Sometimes for the installation, I give a title that that just for fun, in a way, but uh, it's not like uh, like charm. <laughs> but basically, I think uh, uh, the box over there, for example, the wooden box is wood, but it's a container. It's a square object, or like, you know, if you go. To to find meaning of it, it's just really infinite. Like this, I really think a lot. Like uh, this metal spoon is like Chinese spoon or like aluminium or like uh, you know the shape. For I don't know. There's so many names you can or so many meaning you can find, and then it's just sometimes good to forget about. So when you're performing for a group of people, do you have do you have intentions with what perception you want to open for people um, in the way that they relate to these objects or mm. in the experience that they have in their performance? I have always the intention or like desire kind of to have some sort of in, uh, experience, but I don't know which kind of experience. 
because that I want to experience it too. But uh, yeah, some experience, uh, some performances in the past that not many, but it changed uh, my idea about what I'm doing, and that I want to know about it. Like what I'm doing, I don't know. <laughs> and then it changed, but it, you, I never understand it fully. I think, but then that's the why, what, what I want to hear, I don't know, and what I want to experience, I don't know. But I think uh, uh, it seems very important. I don't know why, but, but uh, that towards this, but sometimes good thing, they can uh, change our idea that is so important, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a sort of like a play, mm. like playing with things, and like a curiosity maybe. Mm. Um, and it definitely changed the the space of this room from a sort of a lecture where we're all receiving information mm. to a more kind of open, uh, curious yeah. space. And everyone has different uh, background and also the instinct or nature, whatever. But we all share something, and then we all we are all different from each other. So that so what we so it was very interesting for me to. Uh, see how you, some of you directed me, and then we somehow agreed on this choice. I don't know that some people are easy to express, and some people are more discreet. Like, I wouldn't do that when I asked you. <laughs> but, uh, but that I also shared this choice as well with you, and then that, but you never know where this. Uh, communal choices really came from. But that interests me, like how, yeah. Sorry, I have a question from the stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, this is a question from Beat. How do you choose your material? Is it about a story, like the Italian stones or the old toy? Or is it the raw material itself, or a connection to people or sight? Dot dot dot. And is there a material you absolutely don't like, and how do you use it anyway, and how and why? Followed by a winky smiley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how do I choose my material? Is uh, it? Somehow, uh, I like combine things. I think the one interesting shape, one interesting thing that, but I don't know how to use. For example, that I have those things, but it, as long as these are still interesting, I keep it. But then uh, I have this kinetic thing that. Is more like uh, how to use them and these things. But sometimes it just really happen like ah, oh, this and this can be together. That you never, I never know when this moment really come during the performance or uh, when I'm just thinking about something else, and then it all of a sudden it comes. So it's really nice. To, it's for me it's important to select these things and always have close to me, near me. So it's like a, uh, in my memory, kind of, because I'm going to forget if it's really far and then it's in the box and everything. So it just, uh, but I don't know that how they come from. Sometimes I couldn't say no. People, ah, oh, dear, you must like these things. So they, I get the present, like uh, things and things, and I uh, oh, thank you so much, but then I, it's not my case, but, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but it's nice to have, it's 
not good I to be egoistic about you know I should open myself and I leave it. Sometimes it's too cute. Because <laughs> but people say my thing is like toy, but the, I don't really use toy much. Well, the whistle yes, but the, it's like the thing is a container and everything. But I notice people small thing people call toy, but it's just a scale. <laughs> And then what is the other question? I don't know if I can answer you. Uh, yeah, there was just the one question. Um, the no, 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 no. He had what least material, least favorite. Least favorite. Least favorite. Is material. there a material you absolutely don't like, <laughs> and do you use it anyway, and how and why? I think the beautiful objects I don't think I can use, like the thing, the expensive material I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the yeah. I like the cheap uh, or free thing or like the recycle. I really like the recycling, even if it's expensive thing and then it's like broken and then it's useless and then there's a potential. But often I don't like so much expensive thing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think, do you mind if I take yeah. some more questions on the wire there? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned um, about not trusting yourself and um, like the way you in, engage with your objects as a way almost like playing hide and seek. Mm. I'm curious about how your process of performing and composing, I don't know if you would use those words for yourself, so, um, but when you are performing, mm -hmm. what's the relationship between presenting objects, presenting sounds, and presenting yourself, and how do you navigate presenting yourself in a way, like, with dignity, like, how does that come into it? Uh, I think always in the first sound or first object is difficult, but I try not to choose them. Like uh, uh, the things that my hand naturally reach, or the things that I can naturally see. I like something. I don't like my conscious kind of, but I trust something behind of it. So when if I reach something and then there's no mistake anyway, the first sound, but uh, I don't want to choose too much um, of one thing, but it's just the starting and then and then after it's like uh, I'm gonna be totally involved, so I don't really think much, so it's that easy and then I enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. Hi there. Hello. That was really good. Um, I'm interested to know, I've seen you play several times and often it's in a, a solo or duo, mm -hmm. depending, and sometimes it flip, flips. How does your approach differ between the two? Yes. Uh, it's quite different, I think, but the, it's, I just, uh, my, uh, I try to, the first of all, I try to create this moment, work, that either solo or duo or trio, so that First, I think about the, what's the duration, what is the space, and then uh, who I'm, I'm solo or alone or with other people. Are they musician or not? Like sound art or any sculptural aspect they have, if they have it, or it's just an improvised. Or, so I like to think about all these uh, conditions 
situation and the condition. But then I often think, uh, don't think about the presence of audience. Even sometimes it's changed the whole context if it's too many or too big. Or but musician, when I'm playing with musician, like uh, they, it's like a conversation. I think when I'm playing with people, it's more like a conversation, like a, just talking to each other. So sometimes it's a good. Uh, there's mo I think it, there are many more like uh, pause uh, or stop and start kind of thing, like because it's a little uh, sentences. But when I'm doing a solo, it's uh, I think I'm more concerned about the whole space, like how to. Uh, I still don't know how to make the sculpture, sculptural experience in the in my performance. So it's just I try those. I think about this when I'm doing solo. But when I'm doing playing with a musician, I cannot really uh, uh, do that. I feel so. It's more like a conversation than a piece. Yeah. But also, uh, when I play with other people, um, I don't know. I kind of sometimes try to make the most uh, stupid thing and then see how the music, the music might like uh, evolve from there. Like a stop. Like sometimes my battery runs out and it stops. Or sometimes. Uh, <laughs> last time I played at Cafe Otto in October for the Maggie Pitnikos uh, residency, I, I played with her duo, which was nice, and then she had a duo with uh, Phil Minton together, and then I was sitting behind, and then I started to hear constant noise of tune. <laughs> hmm, it sounds like mice. <laughs> and then I was sitting next to my friend Keiko uh, Yamamoto, and she said, Yeah, go and stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go around and then stop it. And I just uh, really, at the day, was just uh, responding to this uh, sound. And I was <laughs> geography in your work, in terms of the materials, where they come from, mm. the stories that are associated with them, and the fact that they've been all over the world. Mm. And I just wondered, in all those travels, firstly, have you ever lost your suitcase? <laughs> and secondly, what did you do? And then thirdly, what happens at baggage check with your suitcase? <laughs> <laughs> and does that affect your, you know, I sometimes wonder, like, okay, I never lost my suitcase before the performance. On the return trip, yes, I've done. And then second one is uh, what happened if it happened. I, I kind of think about it, especially now, like uh, there's uh, so much uh, problem like uh, in the airport. And I think about it. But then I think it's fine. You know, something I can do. Like once I played in the old carriage, uh, like uh, this, like uh, I forgot the word, uh, old carriage with lots of graffiti and things and that kept after the crash or something. And then I, after performing this uh, train ca um, carriage, and then. Uh, in the end, I didn't use anything. I just hit. I found.
found a, some metal parts in this carriage and that resonates. So I just skip one by one. But <laughs> it's more important thing for me is to understand the situation, like where the bodies are and how we hear and how we experience. And uh, what was the third one? Uh, Oh ah, yes, the security check. Mm. Yes, that was. I now put everything in the check-in luggage, but then Eurostar, you can you still have to show passes. But then sometimes they open and then they ask me what it is, and then <laughs> I well this. I found it much easier to say it's a music instrument. I were, so they were very friendly with the mu sound music. <laughs> <laughs> or like little things. I, I, I just said I, I use these little things for my music performance. And then one of the women once said, ah, I know my friends do this too. It's tough. But it just it depends on the situation and then um, once the long time ago before I uh, have not much experience, my luggage is stopped and then I have this uh, toy gun beads like the plastic beads in the bone shape plastic uh, container and they were stopped and then the security guy asked me do you think it's allowed and then I said can, can it not be allowed and so it's so ridiculous I just gave it this container I took uh, inside <laughs> I don't need this container plastic and then I gave it to him and then and then I was panicked and I showed the more dangerous things to him. I don't even have this to him. <laughs> that was the kind of the very big nail from Japan that handmade. I ordered all these you know the some guys to make this for me and then and I showed I don't know why I did it. It's just and then this is really not possible to get. <laughs> but I cannot really uh, uh, you give this to him, so I just uh, went to the post office and I sent it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, since then, I just uh, have a check, always checking luggage. And then, Thank you so much. Um, I think it's really important to, to remember that it's really, uh, it's okay to not have a goal sometimes to explore with, with these things. I think it's, it's hard to remember that when we're in, in a course like this where there's always assignments and you always have a goal to work, work, to work towards. Mm. Uh, but my question is, um, do you feel like your, your listening has changed throughout the years of exploring with the, the, the materials and uh, in, did that in any way, you, you, your listening, change the way you work? Mm, yes, well, I don't really think about listening much. It's, uh, but I think it actually changed. Well, I don't think about it, but I listen. And then, <coughs> Uh, it's from the experience and then I know which sound would work and not more in certain context um, but uh, well the other day I went to San Francisco to install my installation and it was group show and then there was a video piece and then something like a very big sculpture next to me and I had a long wall um, for my 
myself and I may actually quite a small sound, for example, but I don't know, quiet, but, but we use quiet or louder for the listening, but then actually you really, uh, it's a part of the whole thing, sound, part of the well, visual, visual is also part of something else. So that the continuation of this part and part and part and part and then the question is how much I can involve and how, what, which kind of whole I can make in this moment. And if I fail, it's fine too. Um, so this kind of idea, well, I mean, I have this idea a little bit, but then sometimes I felt uh, I could do this now. I think it's just a, it's not just an experience, like an art experience, it's just also age as well. <laughs> like you, you know you don't have to make it loud to make people listen that the volume is not important, it's more like concentration, how to uh, bring the concentration. And first, I have to be involved in this to uh, invite people, in a way. So I always think that if I reach somewhere, that's the door for other people. My, that my goal for this moment, I, I, mean, so I use the word goal, but the, if I achieve there, and then from there, I can meet other people, that sound or visual. So if I'm staying here, still people don't know how to enter. So it's just uh, this, somehow you ha I have to be clear, make it clear that, uh, you yeah. know, Starting the sculpture field, I found that um, really interesting how sort of context, uh, the contextualizing mm -hmm. of um, how you perceive sculpture, because sculpture is more like a visual thing, um, but then to uh, pers like perceive the textures not by eye or even touch, but to hear them, that's something that uh, was kind of, yeah. Um, especially when you when you talked about how you know how your uh, pieces move on the mm -hmm. certain textures, my question is: um, Do do you have any any um, anything that you would like people to take from uh, your uh, performances, from your uh, pieces? Is there any realization you would like people to to have, uh, or or do you or, or, or is it more like an interpretive um, thing for you? Mm, I don't have that. I think I'm happy if people are individuals um, to think about what they want to think. <laughs> I don't have the message and thing in my work. Because we are all from different places and we all have the different lives. And um, yeah, we when we see something a little strange thing or unfamiliar, we smile or we talk or that's kind of interesting for me. Like so, like an identified object or an identified uh, phenomenon or something that we never experienced before. That if I could uh, give that kind of thing, what people respond is sometimes just simply smile or like a talk something, or they try to find a link to like 
being cool, try to remember what uh, relevant experience before this. I think this is just a lot of things going on in our mind. I don't have a, I think that's more precious experience than what I can say. <laughs> that's great, I appreciate it. I think about um, installation work, and I mentioned that show in San Francisco. But mm -hmm. sort of, and how does that? Okay, I'll get to a question at some point. What intrigued me when we were all performing together was how you, how we get out of something, like how you get out of a performance or an artwork, or like an edit is really interesting for me. Like as when I make things, I'm always thinking, how do I escape my own creation? And it was really interesting. I love the way we sort of decided and had a consensus in terms of getting out of something mm -hmm. just now. But when it comes to installing in a gallery, I'm guessing that's a little bit different maybe because the works are on. So yeah, just a very open question about what, it, what it's like for you to install your work in galleries. Maybe how is it different to performance? Um, yeah, what, what's that process like for you? Um, I don't know if this is the question, but the, the moment when I fix things in the space that excite me in a way, like the dream on the wall, and you're going to be there <laughs> for three months, something like this. I mean, that's really different. When I'm performing, I just play space. I mean, the sculpture in this sense is more like time and air. But then in the gallery space, when I fix things, things are so satisfying. And then where should I go next? And next, I'm going to decide without hesitation. But I have some always this indecisive marks. <laughs> <laughs> Placing is so, I like the activity, yeah, just placing it quite the, uh, or how do you stand, how do you, you decide the position, and then when, once you decide, you have to fix it, and that, I like this activity, and the sound too, uh, but to keep it going, and I don't want them to, now I, learning how to make as flexible as possible or like the loose, keep the looseness and fixing this looseness in the piece, like soft, softness in the movement. mentioned the community, the music, mm. musicians community, musicians having community and like, I guess improvised music especially has a really strong community mm. um, of trust, I think. I like, I guess this is something that I've been thinking about recently, which is trust in improvised music and trust in music communities. and. I guess when when you perform with somebody you've not performed with before, because I mean I don't know how often it happens for you. I know you perform in all sorts of different, you know, all around the world, and mm. I'm not sure if you always know the person before. But I guess that's the the question. That's like the the conversation or the topic. It's less of a question, but it's like what's it. How do you feel about performing with people that you've not performed with before? And is it normally people that you know, mm. you know of? Like, for instance, with the gig with Sholto, mm. I know that you knew Sholto beforehand. I never but you know heard. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never seen oh, his really? performance before. Oh, okay. So what was that like? Is like, uh, because did you know Sholto's name before? Or? Yes, name I knew. 
So then, do you think there was an element of trust there because mm. you because from the music community you knew Sholto's name? Mm. Did you trust that it would work? <laughs> the question is, do I have to say yes or not? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but yeah, no, not at all. It's, uh, I trust the coincidence and also uh, a very nativistic or like a moment, like uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, I'm away and this, this, this. But uh, I like this coincidence, like the moment you ask me, I have some, we always have different ideas somehow, like for, or maybe I shouldn't perform more. Uh, you know, in this moment, I receive some me message. I'm not sure. <laughs> but when I'm, you know, kind of uh, flexible and then just, you know, yes, I'm happy. But this kind of moment is, uh, it's difficult to just keep the one idea in me. And then it's from the, also this experience of previous project really influenced my idea as well from what, just how I am and how I should do, continue with this. But then I believe in the coincidence. Um, ah, maybe then this kind of, when it naturally come, come out, it's like, uh, it's breathing in a way, like breathing in and breathing out. And then if I say yes, ah, maybe I said yes. And then if I said no, but I don't say no so much because I enjoy this. Uh, I try to uh, keep my activity as enjoyable as possible. <laughs> so I don't say no. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I, have, um, okay, I have another question from the internet from Matthew Jinks. Do you think your practice is reductive in nature? And if so, do you miss any parts of your studio practice that were left behind, such as working with wood in a technical way? Mm. Yes. Uh, I'm not so minimalist, I think, but the reduction is maybe. But then I don't like to have this piece myself so uh, we yes uh, I like wood car I miss wood carving because I always uh, hesitate to I have some chisel in Japan and then it's always quite uh, heavy and then like stone stone for the sharp, sharpening the chisel um, should I bring it or not should I bring it or not but then do I do it or not? <laughs> do I really do it or not? And then I decided not to do it. Okay, one day, one day I do it. But then there's so many of these things, like one day you do it again. But in the end, I feel, uh, yes, that I like it, but it's not, I don't really need it for now to continue. Um, and then I know I'm not a good uh, wood carver, like, uh, or I'm not good at, uh, if I have a studio, I'm, but I'm traveling a lot, and I don't really think it's, I don't really use it. It's just uh, what makes me define my activities, I don't know. Uh, I'm more thinking about how to carry my thoughts while moving or traveling and also how, yeah, it's, uh, it's just in between this uh, physical object, the physical space and then also the kind of opposite side of this, how to, yeah. I would know when I have studio. <laughs> I would always lose something. If I gain something, I would say lose something. So that's uh, I can I know I'm limited. That's I know. 
that the way to do it, uh, and I always think I can only carry what I can carry, but you can always push a bit. You can always use the, the sensings or ask people what you know, prepare something over there, but then I might forget what I ask. <laughs> and, and some people would have an assistant for the memory or for their other activities. But then I quite like the process doing myself. Like, or I mean, I don't. I never really want to have some. I, mean, I can't afford to do this. But <laughs> I like this. Uh, I receive one email, and then from there we start to think together, and then I think I gather some objects. I'm talking about installation because, and then first, uh, and then we step. I step into the space, and then so where is the start of the work? It may be this email. <laughs> so this is why I don't really want to. Uh, um, actually, I'm going to take the opportunity to ask you a question since I've got the mic, just to follow on from what you were saying about understanding that you're limited and that you can only carry so much. I thought about how you have the one suitcase and I think I'm right in remembering you talk about the scale of your work being to the scale of your hand. Could you talk a bit that uh, it's not my work is the scale of my hand but the, I just uh, it's just my fantasy that the, this hand uh, this ball for example this ball hasn't changed the, the balls the scale of the ball hasn't changed so much since the, we started to make things I guess because our hand is like this. <laughs> our hand, the scale of our hand hasn't changed so much. And our height. So the building of ancient building, we can usually go in because we haven't really become taller or smaller. Um, so th this relationship is so, it's kind of funny in the new <laughs> So I like, it's like a just imagination. I think. So uh, this shape you can uh, dig in the archaeological people that they dig and then they found this ball. It's always the size is the same size in every world. But and then I understand uh, we uh, we haven't changed much. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of. As an artist, how do you approach periods of boredom in your practice? Do you feel like it serves a function? Um, some of what I've researched has said that when you find yourself bored mm. at any period of time in your life, it's the beginning of new creativity. Your mind's looking for answers to, you know. So I'm curious how you, if you, if you experience that, and if you do, what does it mean? How do you? I think uh, boredom is just boredom. Really, we are in, <laughs> if you, or if I'm boredom, in the boredom, uh, bored, I'm just bored. That's nothing else. It's, it's not the beginning of creativity. It's, uh, well, we try to, I don't know for myself, it's a creativity, it's both difficult <coughs> subject, I guess, but we all get bored and then we all get creative 
but uh, it's just that we cannot always keep this. We cannot always be involved, and we cannot always be creative. I think it's just uh, it's like a, again it's just rhythm. Um, I think. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it because you are bored, you understand more. I think both is quite uh, important. Everything is so important in my life. I don't know. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're at a, a crossroads. We've got about 15, 20 minutes left. I don't know how you do for energy and things, but um, we can either start winding down or wind up, whatever that might mean. <laughs> um, how are you feeling? Um, I think it's a um, it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you very much.